They done added sports to the after the altar, so I think someone at Netflix is really testing me. Hello and welcome back to the Miscellaneous channel where we do miscellaneous things. I'm Zelenny. I typically cover TV, pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things on this channel, so subscribe if that's your vibe. So today we're going to be talking about Love is Blind After the Altar Season 4. And we knew it was coming. I remember photos going around of camera crews following around the contestants around when the live reunion was aired. Overall, the After the Altar special was not very eventful. Like, if I wasn't covering it, it's probably a skip. And that's not totally a bad thing because at least our three successful couples from season four are going strong, they're thriving. Season four gave us a lot of great drama and villains, but on the other side, it gave us some really successful couples that I think a lot of the fans like to root for. So it's kind of like good and bad that the After the Altar was uneventful because, for example, season two's After the Altar was very dicey since we had some couples that were on the rocks and later ended up divorced. But so far, season four's couples have been going strong. I think to this day, they still all seem to be going strong. As far as entertaining TV, the After the Altar special was not great for that. As many great villains as we had in season four, you can tell all of them are on their best behavior. Like you can tell they all just came out of some bad public backlash. And think about like reunion time, that's like, peak everyone cares about the season so you can tell all of the villains are doing all the damage to control they can and on their best behavior everyone's apologizing everyone's staying cool no one's fighting there was a little bit of drama at the very end and we'll get to that but i want to go ahead and start recapping the three episodes that dropped for after the altar first we'll talk about each couple or person if they're single any updates their current status and then after that i'll talk about like the climax event that happened every after the altar has a different event that basically reunites everyone in the cast and in this one it was like a sports game I was like what are we doing here I was not very interested but yeah so first let's talk about each couple's leading up to the climax sports game and then we'll talk about the game and the post game and what happened when everyone got together the way they set up the very organic idea of the sports game is in the first episode all the three successful couples have a fancy dinner together. Zach and Bliss present their idea of having a friendly flag football game uh, with everyone from the cast and that it would be a good way to like release all the tension. They are hoping like people being on the same team helps them make amends and things. I just feel like no one wanted to offer up their birthday party <laughs> this season and they just found some other way. I did think this fancy dinner with the three couples was a really neat idea um, since these couples are so strong and wholesome and we like to see them happy, I guess. Like it's a good way to make a reunion without all of like the toxic and messy other stuff going on. So we actually opened the After the Altar special with Tiffany and Brett, our flagship couple of season four, the fan favorites. That seems very fitting. And they're going strong as ever. Um, they do keep it real though. They say, you know, marriage has its struggles and their main conflict they ran into is after they got married, they ended up having to move to Portland for Brett's job. Um, so Tiffany kind of had a hard time with that because she was very acclimated to Seattle and loved it. So that all seemed like a very normal marriage thing to go through. Tiffany and Brett are as fun as ever. They talk about how they take spontaneous abroad trips sometimes and just I'm just like what is your life like that's cool we love to see it we love to see them thriving for everyone in this special they show kind of the lead up to the sports football game they're preparing for and Brett is like making a whole like coaches plan for the football game and Tiffany is also really knowledgeable about football so they both like are kind of competing about who knows more about football also Brett like claims he's unathletic and it's just like 
Hello. And Tiffany acknowledges that that sounds crazy uh, because of how he looks and all those muscles don't just grow overnight. So I don't know what bro was talking about being unathletic, but maybe he's just like not coordinated. There's not much to say about the successful couples. They're all just like, woohoo, happy. I mean, normal marriage stuff, but also like mostly good things, a lot of good things. So next, our other successful couple is Zach and Bliss, who were kind enough to take the lead on uh, planning this football game. Zach is still like in his scruffy era, and I feel like that's kind of the biggest clue that this was filmed really close to the reunion because he looks very similar. It's actually really funny for Zach and Bliss. They show them in this doctor's office, and it is kind of implying it's like something about fertility because they're both there, and it feels like, why are you both at the doctor's office? It feels was kind of like some sort of consultation on fertility but it was just the editors playing a joke on us and it turns out to be Zach's allergy treatments that he's getting in order to live with Bliss's dog and cat and apparently Bliss had to rehome the dog and cat for a while while Zach started these treatments uh, but now he's coming to the end of it they already got the dog back and they're working on getting the cat back. Just a funny like switch up. They were trying to like make it ambiguous why they were there but it was just it was just pet stuff. At the dinner they kind of talk about like oh does Zach still sing a lot because that was like his cringy thing he would do in the season and yes he does still sing a lot but Bliss is fine with it. The pets are fine with it. I mean we can't ask them directly but uh, they're gonna have to be. At one point Zach says he sang for like one to two hours and Kwame's face said it all. <laughs> one to two hours. <laughs> but like whatever like cringy people be cringy that's fine like as long as we don't have to listen to Zach singing and we didn't during this after the altar special like I'm fine with it. If Bliss is happy with the singing Go for it, girl. In episode two, Bliss hangs out with Amber, who I had to like remind myself, who the hell is Amber? That's the girl that Paul rejected in the pods when he was between Micah and Amber. And Amber was also the one who was like crying when the mean girls were mean girling and being rude and just making fun of her crying and stuff. So I remember Amber. I just feel like the show keeps trying to make Amber happen though and I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't care that much about this lady. I feel like in these types of episodes, production always tries to bring in the pod squad because like the main cast isn't providing as much. I feel like the main cast gets so much engagement and backlash from fans online that like they're more tame in follow-up episodes and more scared of like the public reaction. But the pod squad who may not have gotten as much screen time as they would have liked are hungry for the attention and the screen time and they want uh, to be part of it, so I feel like they're more down to provide drama. I'm not even thinking about like, oh, Paul and Amber, is there a spark? I'm like, no, like they knew each other for like three days probably, and they broke up back then. And it's not the same as like Paul and Micah who have more of a journey that we followed. I don't know, I just feel like sometimes these other people are just kind of pushed by production just to like try to force some conflict when I'm not really that invested in them. Amber says she has like a new guy from a music festival and she's moving to San Diego. We don't need more updates. <laughs> or maybe some people do. I, any diehard Amber fans, proclaim it in the comments. <laughs> So in the prep for the football game, Bliss is like super excited about it. And Zach doesn't seem excited at all. He just seems like really worried about safety. He was like so worried about safety that I got scared that like it was foreshadowing and like someone was gonna break a boat or something. It wasn't and nobody did. And Bliss did break a nail, but she was such a good sport about it. If that were me, that would be a wrap on everyone there. I would be pissed. But yeah, Zach and Bliss are going strong, like relationship-wise, it seems. I talked about this in another video, but like, Bliss is the only Love is Blind contestant I follow on Instagram. Uh, just because like, I, it's a slippery slope. I don't want to follow everybody that's ever been on the show, but like, I love Bliss so much that I follow her. So I've I kind of been keeping up with her and Zach's uh, marriage and they seem to be going really strong. She does a lot of like, 
Instagram story Q&As all the time, so I feel like I've learned a lot about them. They talked about how they were getting ready to go on this big honeymoon uh, trip across Europe, and when they were talking about it, I was like, oh, I remember seeing them on Instagram, like, going to all the places in Europe. They actually end the special with them, like, going on their flight uh, to that Europe honeymoon. Next we have Chelsea and Kwame and they're also thriving. I mean, Kwame still looks like he's hypnotized or like a prisoner or something, but I think it's just his face. I think it's just how he talks. I don't know. We established this in his season. They're apparently best friends with Zack and Bliss and they hang out all the time, which I feel like is really cute. They even travel together. I was hoping they would mention something about Chelsea's new job of being a recruiter for Love is Blind. Apparently she's on the casting team now and that was recent news. What if like someone behind the camera asked Chelsea like, you want a job here or something? Like, I don't know, I was hoping for some cool meta moment, um, but they did not reference that at all in this. I mean, it's very recent news that Chelsea like posted on her socials about she's casting for Love is Blind now, but I wanted to know more about that. I'm like, how do you, transition from that. I mean, I bet it's easy. You you get really friendly with these producers when you're on a show like this. Maybe she was just like, hey, I'm looking for a job or, you know, I, ne I have a big network. I don't know, but <laughs> if you were like me and hoping for that, well, it was not addressed in this after the altar. For Chelsea and Kwame, they like go to like a baseball game and they she like throws the first pitch, which is like a thing. I don't know, the, the context clues made it seem like it was a big deal. I don't know how big a deal it is, but like they, that that's what they did on the, for this after the altar and like, Afterwards, Kwame and everyone was like, good job, Chelsea, woo! I always enjoy Chelsea on my screen just for all the pink <laughs> she provides. That dress she wore for the dinner, I want that dress very bad. <laughs> At the dinner, Chelsea and Kwame do have an interesting moment because Chelsea actually cries uh, or has a lot of emotion about the sacrifices that Kwame made because, you know, Tiff and Brett and Zach and Bliss are all talking about these grand trips they keep going on and stuff. And Chelsea and Kwame had not been able to travel much in this first year of marriage. Chelsea like acknowledges that that's like a big life change for Kwame. He used to travel a lot. And that at the time that they were getting married, she downplayed a lot about hit the sacrifices he was making. Now she's remorseful and like really appreciates the sacrifice and acknowledges it. And also promises that like soon they will travel again and, and they will get there. It, it just felt like very healthy like couple stuff. At least she reflected on uh, things she did wrong and uh, he seemed to appreciate it as well. Later on, Chelsea and Kwame go to like a big family party. I think it's maybe for Chelsea's birthday or something. And we see Kwame's sister again, which is cool. Her and Chelsea seem really, really close, which is adorable. They also give an update on the situation with Kwame's mom because remember, I, I kind of forgot about this, but the mom did not approve of the marriage. She wasn't at the wedding and that was kind of like a big deal. It was part of the reason I feel like a lot of us thought maybe Kwame would say, no, because the mom never approved of this. They say the journey has been really slow, but Chelsea has made a lot of big efforts. Uh, she wrote her like a letter. Their relationship seems to be progressing, but very slowly, you know. And that's very real. Like you can't control everyone's reaction to things. And good on Kwame for not like letting just his mom's stubbornness or I don't, I don't remember what her hang up was, but not letting that stand in his way of like his own happiness. But yeah, Chelsea and Kwame, doing great. Now we're getting into the single people or the not married from Love is Blind people because some might be in relationships. Starting with Micah, Micah's storyline was strange because we see her at first go to lunch with Paul's mom and they are like way too close to each other. Paul's mom seems to have no boundaries about any conflict of interest between her own son and Micah, who she loves. Like, it feels like she just wants to be Micah's best friend. And she's like obsessed with Micah. And she like tells her tea about Paul. His mom is telling her like, oh, Paul is seeing a new girl and talking and whatever. And Micah's just like, uh, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's just kind of a weird relationship. I think it's overstepping boundaries on the mom's end. Um, I don't think it's Micah's fault as much. Um, 
but apparently they just talk a lot and it just seems like strange when there's still a little bit of ambiguity between Micah and Paul. Oh, also the update with Micah was that she moved back to Seattle full time. All that worrying about being half in Arizona, half in Seattle, that was like the main issue was for nothing. She moved to Seattle anyway. <laughs> Micah reflects on the she wouldn't be a good mother comment, which made me mad all over again at Paul because like, what the hell was that comment? She's like less angry about it now. I just think it just, it just, yeah, it came out of nowhere. So on another day, Micah goes to have lunch with Shelby. Shelby's back and Shelby was back big time in this after the altar special. Like you would think she's part of the cast now, but, and Micah has this moment of like defending Shelby saying like, oh, she, yeah, she's aggressive, but she loves deep. <laughs> Girl, bye. <laughs> We did not want to see this much of Shelby, but okay. And then Irina comes in and joins the lunch and it truly becomes like the plastics <laughs> lunch table. They're not being mean girls though uh, in any obvious way. This is the only kind of update we get on Irina and she just says she's single and like dating herself and whatever. Again, all the villains were on their very best behavior during these episodes. Micah ends this lunch saying that she is conflicted about Paul dating someone else because Paul reaches out to her a lot for like advice and just like, like in a friendly way that sometimes they feel like they're talking and she doesn't know if that overlapped with this new relationship. So she's just like, kind of confused about where they stand, even though they're not dating. So moving on to Paul, his updates are not that there's not that many updates on Paul. Um, he also talks to his mom and his mom tries to like push Mike on him. And I would be so annoyed if my mom was doing this and hanging out with just an ex and wanting to be best friends with them. I'd be like, mom, what the hell, what are you doing? She needs to just pick a side and she should probably pick the side of, you know, her son and not some random girl she barely knows. And Paul talks more about this timeline of like, him and Micah tried to date after the wedding thing, but he went for a long weekend in Arizona to visit her and that was where she ended things. And it was pretty soon after the show wrapped. Paul is just so clueless. I'm like, what's going on here? Like <laughs> on socials, he seemed to have a girlfriend for a long time, but now there's a lot of rumors about him being on that perfect match show. Um, and having broken up with that girl. We didn't see much of him on After the Altar, but like, I don't think that information is relevant today. Okay, and then we have a couple, but not a married couple, and that is Jackie and Josh. And they definitely provided the only drama of this After the Altar special, and it wasn't until the very end. Jackie and Josh, I just, oh my God. Like, every time they're on screen, I'm just like, Ugh, Josh is so exhausting. He like actually acts like a toddler. When he's drunk, it's worse, but like when he's sober, he is also acting like a toddler. She mentions the hate she's received and she's basically like F the haters <laughs> about it. She doesn't care. Josh is just so immature, like how he talks. He seems like such a like crypto bro, hustle and grind, like, I don't know, this type of like DJ Khaled. I don't I don't know why he's in the mix, but you know, like just that fuck boy type of vibe that I just, like what woman would find this attractive? But some women do, I guess, like Jackie. They're all like on a date and he like throws a grape at her face out of nowhere. And I'm just like, girl, if this is how you want to be treated, like, they deserve each other. <laughs> and I feel bad. I'm not normally this harsh on contestants, but like every time he's on screen, he's just like chaos. And it's very like confusing how Jackie has like the patience for that. So Jackie goes to like lunch or have drinks with a girl named Kasha or like her name is written as Kasha in my notes, but I think they might've pronounced it differently. So sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Jackie had like kind of a core friend group in the pods and the rest of them we don't really know because they didn't like do the full show they're like pod squad people and kasha is one of them they sort of clear up what happened with this marshall thing in the ring so at the reunion they talk about why marshall wanted the ring back and jackie accuses marshall that he wanted the ring back just because he was ready to propose to 
another contestant. And apparently that was Kasha. That's who he mentioned at the reunion. So Marshall defends himself and says, I was not trying to give the ring to someone else or propose to anyone else. I did date that woman. We just went on like one date, but it didn't work out. So Jackie and Kasha are talking about that and trying to like set the record straight. Kasha says they went on a couple dates. So Marshall lied because it was, he said it was just one date, but they talked and texted some and maybe went on a couple dates. And I'm just like, that still doesn't mean Marshall was ready to propose. And it didn't sound like Marshall was ready to propose. And I think Jackie was just throwing out allegations to make Marshall sound bad. Their conversation made it seem like they were trying to like validate Jackie's point that like Marshall was ready to go propose to someone else. I don't know, it was kind of confusing, but all of the Jackie stuff gets so confusing. I'm always like, what, what happened? I don't. I don't know, but <laughs> that was that argument cleared up, I guess. The other update with Jackie and Josh is that they're moving in together and we see them move in. For some reason, their boxes just have Christmas stuff and like a really ugly rug, <laughs> but the apartment they moved into looked really nice. I'm like, what do these people even do? Must be nice. <laughs> and they kind of end their segment with Josh saying they're not ready for marriage and they're not planning on an engagement. And then finally, Marshall, we don't see too, too much of him, but we see him go on a double date with his new partner, Shy, uh, who is a doctor, work. They go on a double date with Tiff and Brett, and they just seem very much in love. Marshall is very much like gushing for Shy and thinks she's the best, so it's great to see him happy. I think he got kind of like a short end of the stick with his experience, so it's great to see him in a good relationship. He seems to really like. Okay, so that was all the couples and the contestants um, leading up to the sports game. Now we make it to this flag football friendly thing game. I can't really follow what's going on in the gameplay. Eventually the purple team wins. It's like the pod squad versus the the Globlins, the, the gold, golden gobs, I think. Um, but the purple team pod squad wins, mostly because they just have Kwame on the team, who is an athlete. I just felt bad for Brett having to like be team captain for a team with Josh on it, who was being uh, obviously chaotic as always. Also like Shelby was playing and I'm like, she doesn't even go here. <laughs> Why is she playing? There is a quick conversation between Amber and Paul where Amber tries to be like, so you're moving to San Diego, I'm moving to San Diego. And Paul is like, cool, we'll have to catch up sometime. <laughs> but you can tell Paul is not interested at all. And Amber is kind of like, pretending not to care, but it kind of feels like she cares. <laughs> and it's like, girl, just let it go. But anyway, I think that's that on their relationship. They show Bliss and Irina getting along on the same team. I mean, I don't think Bliss has much beef with Irina. I think Zach is way more scared of Irina than Bliss care. Like, I feel like Bliss doesn't care at all about what Irina's up to, and they were very friendly on their own team. Then Micah and Chelsea have a conversation where Micah apologizes for, like, what they've been through and says, like, oh, you and Kwame are so cute together. It felt very much like damage control on Micah's end for flirting with Kwame and stuff. Chelsea was cool with it, was trying to like empathize with Micah being single. They just had like a very friendly conversation there. And those were the only conversations that happened that were like potential conflicts that something could come out of, but everything was very like civil and everyone apologized for their own mistakes and was chill with everybody. Even Jackie and Josh were fine playing at the game and everything. They were chilling, they were fine. After the game, they have like a happy hour party post game Chelsea's birthday again I think I don't know it was some sort of just post game like nicer event where everyone showed up Jackie and Marshall do get to talk one on one and they're actually very chill with each other I think because Marshall loves his relationship he doesn't have any beef Jackie also like she was very cool about Marshall and talking to him and she, she kind of surprised me there because, I don't know, I expect her to, like, be shady all the time. But, like, um, she was very happy for Marshall's relationship. He was even complimenting stuff about the her, his partner and stuff. Again, maybe Jackie was trying to be extra nice because of the backlash she's gotten. Again, another villain kind of doing damage control here. Overall, Jackie seemed happy. 
Marshall's in a relationship, Marshall's happy for her, and they hug at the end, all good. This was the conversation that I, I think I and probably a lot of people expected uh, would be the dramatic one, but it was kind of fine. Irina has a couple moments at this party. One really funny one was when she went up to Jackie and Josh and was like, us villains gotta stick together. It felt like a little bit self-aware at least. I mean, I understand these villains, like for them to be so reformed at this thing, like the backlash they get is definitely not deserved. Even like the nastiest of villains on these shows, like, no, they don't deserve death threats a DM to them or like vile like slurs or whatever people throw at them online. Um, and I bet they are just down to do anything to just quiet the, <laughs> the voices of the fans a little bit. And speaking of damage control, Irina talks to Amber and apologizes for the mean girl moment. Again, I feel like Irina got probably just dragged and so like, harassed online about this that like she probably is sorry at this point like actually even if she is a mean girl at heart so she tries to apologize i mean it's hard to believe it because you know it seems like a moment where she thought maybe no one's watching or didn't think about the consequences and her like true self jumped out i don't know i don't fully buy it but like she, she said everything she needed to say. Amber accepts the apology, so she doesn't care at this point. This is so kind of off topic, but like, they replay this, the mean girl scene, that moment where Irina runs and like, is like listening and like laughing at Amber crying. And they show Micah and like, is Micah wrapped in the Selena Gomez meme blanket? Anyway, then Paul and Micah have a conversation and Micah kind of ends their friendship there. Micah says they shouldn't talk anymore, they shouldn't be friends, and Paul is confused and doesn't understand. And he's like, Th that's weird. Man, you're the one that said no at the altar. Just leave her alone if she doesn't want to talk to you. I don't know why they put this moment in. Like, I don't know what the purpose was of this scene, but there's one point where Chelsea is like, talking about her trauma or like something about her childhood and she's going on and on and Irene is just listening like glazed <laughs> like could not care less but why did they why did they leave that in that's so shady okay and then finally we have like the one drama that actually happens it's kind of confusing again everything Jackie does and Josh now is confusing to me, but whatever. Apparently there was this woman named Monica in the pods and she was part of Jackie's friend group. After Jackie got engaged to Marshall and was off the market, Josh proposed to Monica in the pods and they had a whole like engagement, the meeting with the reveal, the whole thing with the ring. They didn't show us at all. Like, I had no idea about this. Sort of at the end after they meet, Monica says like, oh my god, I'm engaged to a lunatic. Because when they're meeting, like, Josh is being chaotic, as always. Obviously, it's very jarring, and most women will run away. And I think Monica did. They don't really show, like, how they broke it off. They don't show any scenes past the reveal scene. They just mention that Josh and Monica broke up after that. So fast forward to the party, Jackie and Josh hear that Monica's coming to the party and they're freaking out because they just don't want to deal with it. Apparently Monica has been talking about this experience a lot on TikTok and Jackie and Josh think she's been shady to them uh, in those TikToks. Jackie's just scared because Josh is going to be pissed seeing Monica. This whole thing, I had no idea about it. I had heard Monica's name pop up in like the Love is Blind fandom. I don't keep up with Love is Blind to that extent. I mostly care about Love is Blind things that are canon, official, when it's just like someone that was in the pod saying, you know, they didn't air this, they didn't air that. It's hard to like know what's true and what's not. And so I was not like that deep into the TikToks or don't really know what Monica has been saying, but now it is canon because they showed us the freaking footage and I'm like, oh, so this whole thing actually happened. Why did they use show us this? I feel like this would have been good drama to talk about in the regular season, but anyway, so Monica arrives and Monica and Jackie talk and Monica says like, she's not interested in Josh or, you know, having any kind of friendship with him. She just wants to repair her friendship with 
Jackie because they were very close. She was just trying to tell her side of the story on TikTok and not shade anybody, uh, but Jackie feels like she might have been a little shady sometimes, but Jackie is more interested with being ride or die with Josh, even if he's wrong. And she literally says that, like, I need a ride or die for my man, even when he's wrong. And it's like, Jackie, it doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> Why are you like this? Monica brings in Josh to the conversation. She does not do one-on-one -on -one with Josh. She doesn't want that. She doesn't want a relationship with Josh. Uh, so she's talking to Josh and Jackie now, and Josh comes in hot, heated, is accusing, you're a cloud chaser, like right away into the conversation, like they don't even get to talk normally at all. Monica is finally like, you know, Josh is a six year old and she's 100% right. <laughs> because of this stress, Jackie is ready to leave. Josh wants to leave. Jackie's like, I'm so tired of all this drama. I wanna get out of this drama. And I'm just like, Josh is the drama. He's the one that came in yelling with Monica and Monica was very like, I'm just trying to be friends. She wasn't doing anything. <laughs> and so they're just getting ready to leave. And as on their way out, Josh talks to Chelsea and is like, you know, Monica, blah, 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 cloud chasing, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> this was like the most relatable and hilarious thing. Like Marshall was right there next to Chelsea and he just like goes on his phone and it's like, Boop, 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 I'm not listening. That was like the most relatable moment because you can even see his screen a little bit and like he's not doing anything on his phone. He's just like moving around <laughs> like, Ooh, this is awkward. <laughs> that was just a very little real moment caught on camera. But yeah, Josh and Jackie leave and good riddance. And that's the end of the After the Altar. We didn't get any like title cards that were like, then everyone got a divorce. <laughs> um, so it seems like the things we saw still somewhat stand. We just get a teaser for season five coming September 22nd. And that's it. That was after the altar season four. Not very exciting, not very eventful, but it's still nice to see the, the people I like from the season thriving. We'll see what season five brings to us and I'll see you then for that. In the meantime, maybe I'll try some more live streams here and there casually. Uh, I tried one for watching the ultimatum finale and it got promptly stopped mid-live by YouTube. But I'm thinking maybe I'll do more like, when I do like a movie review instead of doing a video like this about it, uh, maybe I can do it live. Um, I'm watching Bottoms this weekend. Maybe I'll do a live just discussing my thoughts afterwards. I'm actually going tonight, um, the day I'm recording this. Um, so, very exciting. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on Love is Blind after the altar four. I don't think there was much there. I think the Jackie stuff was a little bit confusing, but like, I don't think it matters or <laughs> is anything that important. But yeah, if you have any thoughts, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed, I put out new videos whenever I feel like it about TV, pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things. And you can follow me at miscellaneous on Instagram or Twitter to find out about new videos or just turn on the bell notification here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!